How's it going everybody? This is Caleb Ragnar from Pete's RV. I'm over in South Windsor, Connecticut at our Connecticut dealership here. We're gonna do a quick walkthrough video on personally one of my favorite units and the one that I hope to own myself one day for all of my crazy cider operations. And that is the Jayco Seismic from the Luxury Series. We have floor plan 4113 right here now this is a 2023 model and while we're showing this sticker right here right below i just want to go over the five star handling package right here now this is going to include for this triple axle unit we've got the goodyear tires made right here in the good old us of a these are going to be rated for 87 miles per hour. The axles are going to be Dexter axles. They're going to have the Nev R adjust <laughs> brakes with easy lube hubs and those leaf springs you see right inside there. Those are going to be rated for 4,000 pounds each. Now, third component is going to be your Moride pin box right up here on the front. That is going to be component number three out of our five stars. Next one is also going to be by Moride. It is the CRE 3000 rubberized suspension, giving you a little bit of extra cushion when you are hauling this big bad boy down the line. I mean, we're over 45 and a half feet here. This is, this is not a small unit. This is livable, warrantied for full RV living as well, just to point out. And then number five from our five star handling package is going to be the wet bolt fasteners and the bronze bushings. Now just getting a view of this side porch right here, just want to point out on this eight and a half foot wide body, it is going to have that structural steel I-beam with the strong hold vacuum bonded lamination around that aluminum frame. Now that vacuum bonding process through Jayco, they're going to have that in an airtight bag and putting it under 144 tons of pressure for 14 to 16 minutes to ensure that we have complete coverage of all that glue in these sidewalls. Main reason for all of that, we want to avoid any chances of delamination. So this is going to be one of the most thorough vacuum bonded lamination processes in the entire industry. And that's one of the reasons that you're going to be here in Jayco taking a lot of extra safety precautions. While talking about safety precautions, we're going to chat about the roof really quick before we start making a full round on this beauty. And we will be getting up there with this ladder here on the side, obviously, because we've got that toy hauler portion on the back. This is going to be able to be clipped up against the actual unit. So I'm going to just climb my way up on here real quick. And uh, yeah, we're going to make this quick because there's a lot of ice up here. But as we can see, we're going to have that Magnum Truss roof system right here. We can see we've got the two 200 watt solar panels with uh, plenty of room for a couple more three air conditioners on this one in particular and then we're gonna have our wine guard device up there as well with two vents that you can faintly see one in front of that first AC and the other behind the second now this roof is going to be rated for 4,500 pounds it's going to be one of the top leaders in the industry and pretty much giving you peace of mind knowing you can fully walk around this roof as long as you aren't stepping on anything that's clearly visible right here like your skylights or vents and giving you a little bit of extra peace of mind knowing hey if there were ever to be a tree branch falling down you've got that little bit of extra support to give some structural integrity and not have that entire roof cave in Phew, well that was fun we made it down safely and now we're gonna head back over towards the front of this unit and start doing our full on all these other fun little features about this unit one other thing to point out is this is going to be rated for climate shield which means that this unit itself was put into a temperature controlled facility and they were able to bring down those temperatures to as low as zero and as high up to 100 degrees while maintaining an internal temperature between 68 and 72 degrees a few other things that will be provided with that is going to be your fully enclosed and heated underbelly so just showing we've got all coverage underneath and you're going to have that reflective foil on those pass-through compartments with 
some heat ducts. Actually blowing heat down in here, you're going to be able to close those obviously during the warmer months and open them when you wanna have some of that insulation and heat being kept inside of here to be able to keep your fresh water jug from freezing and other components of your plumbing system in here as well. Now, one other thing that's going to be included in that as well is your double layered fiberglass for the battery insulation, uh, as well as some PEX plumbing, just to help you be able to, running off that fresh water tank, be able to get out there and down in colder temperatures while still being able to know you're not gonna have your pipes freezing up on you. Now, for your actual AC units on the roof, those are going to be 15,000 BTU ACs, whisper quiet. Now, that is going to be about 60% more quiet than some of the other competitor brands on these RVs. And nice little feature, because you don't have to worry about all three of those things being loud and noisy when you're just trying to cool off. Now, this unit is also going to have the key to like feature, which means your key for that front door will be the same one for your compartments and that front hatch in the front of this unit. Now, just going along the side right here at the actual entry door, you are going to have the steps that are able to fold right up inside of your unit. Now, these are going to be on a friction hinge. Uh, we call this right here the cowbell. Every time you kick it, you're gonna wanna listen to some Blue Oyster Colt. Don't fear the Reaper. Uh, pointing out the door though, is not on a friction hinge. So you will have to latch this in order for it to hold. And one precautionary note, these things are very easy to break when you pull them away. So always making sure that we have unclipped this before we try to close that actual door. And just to show you how easy it is, I'm not gonna put them in all the way because they're a little wet, but they are just vaguely floating right here. Once I get it up here, you can see those stairs are capable of literally just floating right there. So when you're pulling them down, don't have to worry about having that full weight on the body. Just wanna point out underneath, you're gonna have these metal clips right there. That's going to allow you to individually adjust the legs on this stair. So we open it up, there's a rock or a hole. We got a bypass for that now. You do have the hand railing right here that's gonna be able to fold up and fold over the actual um, porch or over the entry door during travel. Now moving along the side here, oh, just pointing out that cap right there is going to be for a security camera. There will be three other cameras able to be wired up to this unit. It is pre-wired for your side markers on both sides, as well as the backup camera. Now, right here behind the door, we've got one of our black tank flushes. That's going to allow you to rinse out that black tank when you are emptying through your termination valves. And we're gonna have some low point drains right down there. That's gonna be for your hot and cold water lines. This unit is currently winterized, so we're not gonna mess around with anything right at this moment. We've got the furnace exhaust right here. This is going to be a 40,000 BTU furnace. Another little perk to help keep things nice and warm, which is gonna run off of the two 30 pound propane tanks that come on this unit here. Now, first pass through storage compartment right here, you're gonna have the motion sensor lights throughout there. And just, I, I love this, a lot of extra space. I mean, like I said, this is my dream little cider operation, being able to take this and just go and press cider at some of my friend's orchards. It's a dream. Plenty of space to be able to store everything I need for juicing. Now you are gonna have the two awnings as well. They are both going to have the ability to be pitched once they are fully extended by kinking one side to be able to direct that rain flow. Wanna make sure we are not leaving these out when things are getting a little windy or we have some rougher weather on the horizon. Now this little black thing right here, you're gonna see these around the camper and a couple on the interior. These are climate control sensors. This is what's communicating with your HVAC system on the interior to be able to determine the interior and exterior temperatures to figure out exactly how much power output needs to be utilized for heat or AC to be able to reach the desired set temperature. Front pass through, again, more motion sensor. You can see the power cord in there, our water jug. They do give you a gas line with this one because this unit is going to come with the ability to hook up a gas griddle in the back to your quick connect, which we'll get to once we make our full round. Everything really to point out in this one compartment. Moving on down first for the propane right here.
and you are going to already have that regulator in here and also access to your front landing gear should you ever need to conduct some form of maintenance. Other nice things about our storage compartments is they are all going to be on the magnetic latches here and they are slam latch so I'm not always the craziest fan about doing it you can just have them drop right into place. So me personally, I recommend softly closing it and pulling up on these handles while you allow it to naturally fall into place, but had to give the demo of the actual slam latch. Now for the actual front cap here, before I get into that front compartment, just wanna point out now this is a painted fiberglass front cap. There is going to be the built-in specialty LED lightings, which you can see we're going to have this little smiley face, I like to call it right here, that will illuminate, as well as these light bars on the sides as well. That's going to lead us into the front. Now, these seismics for the 2023 models will still have the Onan 5500 generators on here. Pointing out next to that, you're going to have the actual bay for your hydraulic fluid right here which you usually would want to change out. They recommend every two years, but being a bit more proactive and doing every year is going to ensure that you are not going to have as many issues with your leveling system here. Now, this bay right up here can fit four to six batteries all piggybacked off of each other, which, I mean, you can pretty much make this the ultimate off-grid living machine if you were to utilize all those batteries, utilize the generator, and soup up that solar a little bit emergency breakaway line right here when you're hitching up and they do give you a light for some extra visual on those darker nights when you have to hitch up now i do have everything closed up for right now but just pointing out you're gonna have that front slide out there and another one down along the way we're gonna quickly now just go over to our give you a quick peek inside you're gonna see that you'll have your distributor right here for which tank you would like to pull off your propane. Off the, whatever side this little divider is facing towards is the line it will be pulling off of. And if you were to put it in the middle, that will draw off of both tanks if they are both open. In the back right there, you're going to have your battery disconnect here, which is going to cut all 12 volt power supply to the unit from those batteries stored up in that front compartment. Now the yellow stickers right here are going to just give you a bunch of information about the length, weight, we can see cargo carrying capacity for this unit is 3,590 pounds. You can hold just about 100 gallons of fresh water in here, it's going to weigh 882 gallons. This unit as it sits weighs 17,105 and then a full load of gasoline is going to add an extra 167 pounds to that cargo carrying capacity. And as mentioned earlier, 45 foot, seven inches. Now for the tires, it is recommended to keep that PSI over here at 80. And you can see each axle weight rating is for 7,000 pounds. Another motion sensor light right over here. We're going to have that fresh water container right there, which let me see if I can get a light on here real quick. Negative on the lights, but fresh water container right here. There will be a pump at the actual sink you turn on. That way you'll be able to carry fresh water with you instead of having to drink that questionable fresh water tank water, depending on where you fill it up. You never really know where you're getting. And then we're gonna have our 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter right here for you to be able to utilize a handful of the outlets on the interior of this coach. Now for the water station right here, another motion sensor up at the top. We'll have our controls for the auto leveling right there. Great product by Lippert. You will have your quick connect for solar on the side, which mentioned right there, be able to bring a flex panel with you to add a little extra juice should you want to. We're going to have water pump switch right here to turn on that water pump when you want to either winterize or utilize what's in your freshwater tank separate from the pump switch for the fresh water. So this is going to be just off of our main fresh water tank here. Now this light will illuminate when you turn on that pump. Below that we're going to have our outdoor shower. Now once we have fired up, our water heater 
you will be able to utilize hot water out here as well as cold. We're gonna have our coax connections for satellite, cable, and auxiliary. And then we'll have a quick little layout here of exactly how we're gonna be setting these four color dials to determine how we want the water distributed throughout our camper. Now, power fill tank is the settings we will set when we are filling our fresh water tank. To utilize that fresh water tank, you will be setting it to dry camping and turning on the water pump. When just at the campground, we'll be utilizing city water, no pump needed. And then for winterize and sanitize, winterizing will be for pumping antifreeze throughout all the water lines of your camper, while sanitize will be pumping a sanitized solution into the fresh water tank. Now, that's where all the water is going in. Regardless of how we set those dials, this is the only input for water on this camper. And then we will have our first black tank flush, not to be mixed up with the second one by the door, which will be for that bathroom in the rear. We'll have black tank number one and gray tank number one located right here, as well as a pass-through compartment to be able to run all of our hoses once we have everything hooked up. Just pointing out, exhaust for the generator located right here. And then this one, thankfully, I like that they set it up like this because you can still have that slide out open, be able to open up this compartment and not have to be using your head time out here, balancing it, trying to figure out what we're doing inside of that compartment. Tankless hot water, not tankless, my apologies, regular hot water heater right here. You'll be able to operate off of gas or electric depending which preference you have. This compartment is going to be to get access to the back of your residential refrigerator. We can see our water line right here, and thankfully on these units, there is a QR code on the inside on how to properly winterize these lines. Now, this is going to be running up for the ice maker on this unit, which is going to come from our fresh water tank, not, or from the fresh water carboy, not the fresh water tank. So I'm, I'm confusing myself over here, but that five gallon Poland Springs carboy that you usually see on those water fountains that you have in that pass through, that is where you will be pulling the water fresh for the sink to drink, as well as your ice maker and the water dispenser on the fridge. That's correct. I just have to make sure I'm not confusing myself now. Now from that five gallon car, now you will be able to get your drinking water from the pump station at the sink, as well as being able to send water to your refrigerator for the ice maker and dispenser in the door. Now there is gonna be thankfully a QR code inside of the freezer on how to properly winterize this residential refrigerator for when we're setting up for the winter and we don't want things to be freezing inside of those very thin lines. Below that, we've got a low point drain. Now this one is going to be for the fresh water tank that we would fill up via our water nautical system for us to be able to have and pump water through our lines when we are out boondocking and do not have any source of water coming from the campground or an external hose. Those white tubings right there are going to be for the overflow and then we'll have the other portion of that pass-through compartment where we get a quick little glimpse at our vacuum system. So you'll be able to have some tools inside to hook up, be able to vacuum out the entirety of this inside, as well as the hose to vacuum just about every corner of this camper. And you'll have a feature where you can pretty much just lift up this pad and be able to sweep everything up into the unit. We've got our first termination valve for that black and gray tank. And then this low point right here, we've got another low point drain right there, which I do believe that one is for the refrigerator. Correct me if I'm wrong, I do apologize. Now moving on down the line, now for at least this model and 2024, it's going to come standard with those slide toppers. So one less thing you have to worry about, don't need to worry about climbing up on that roof and removing all of that debris. Now right here, we're going to have our second termination valve right here with our second gray tank and the second black tank. Next to that, we're going to have our dual 30 gallon fuel tanks right here with our dispensing system right here. It is going to have a built-in timer, so be able to keep track of things a little bit better. 
This is going to be a compartment to have a macerator installed. And then you'll have your actual power plug right there. I'll just show you under here. You're going to have your spare tire. And you will have a spot to be able to stash your stinky slinky, the uh, septic hose, right there, that black container. And uh, just to point out, I had skipped over, one of these fuel tanks is specifically dedicated to your gas generator right up front because it will be running off of gasoline and not propane. There's that ladder from just climbing up the roof there. You are going to have this little extra storage space on the back right here. They put the bumper right there so you could even install a television there if you would like to. And pointing out, there is going to be an awning on this as well as that little black cap there for the rear view camera. Now the only other thing to point out over here is going to be that quick connect for your propane. They're going to give you that bumper thankfully so you don't end up damaging it with your storage compartment and those hookups for the television. Now this little vent right here is to be able to open while you are driving down the road in case you were carrying one of your toys, quads, motorbike, so you can have some good exhaust, some good ventilation to not have things getting too stinky in there. You're gonna have the port here to lower the spare tire. And then this is where you'll be able to set up an arm for your J port system to house or hold a gas griddle or grill. Got the door right here, which at this point, we're gonna head on in this way and quickly cover this garage since the slide outs are closed and I did not bring a battery out. Pointing out you will have that half bath, washer dryer connections, and then you'll have all your tie downs in the floor right there to be able to mount any toys and keep them nice and sturdy. Now when the porch does drop down, you're gonna have this staircase to be able to set up on the end of it. There will be a ramp, and then they do have the three season doors which you can vaguely see right here. Let me see if I can get my light on, there we go. And you've got your three season doors located right here, which are removable. There is just a screen in there as well, so you'd have your choice to have the three season doors up or just the screen. Now, these couches right here are going to fully collapse and connect to make, I don't even know what size mattress it would be, but you'll have the bunk bed feature here in the back. This one here can raise all the way up to the ceiling. These will become flush with the walls, and you'll be able to fit in. I mean, honestly, you could fit... A four by four, you could, I feel like you could fit a smart car and even possibly, I'm not 100% with the weight, but a Mini Cooper, I feel like you'd be able to fit in here too. Plenty of room, lots of space. You will have one of the air conditioners located right in here, a TV right overhead, as well as some cabinets up there in that top feature, which is actually where another loft is on the side. Throughout the camper, you will notice there will be these remotes to control some of your lights. You'll be able to click them to be able to turn it on and hold them down to be able to utilize the dimming feature. Pointing out one other vent right here to be able to get our cross ventilation. See the other one located on that side. And just giving you a quick glimpse, this is where I kind of get cut off here. So we're going to come back and finish this video on another day when I can fully open up these slide outs because pretty cold here in South Windsor. And I'm ready to go warm up and hopefully film this on a little bit of a warmer day.